What's going on, everybody? Seismic PE prep example number 19 coming right at you. So let's get into it. A regular special steel concentrically braced frame building in seismic design category E is being built in downtown San Francisco. What is the maximum allowable height of the building? Our figure above just gives us kind of a graphical representation of our building with our braces. And we wanna know how tall of a building with this particular vertical lateral system we are permitted by code to construct. You can't just choose a system that you want to use as an engineer and design whatever type of building you want to design, especially when it comes to height. Depending on that system and how robust it is, how ductile it is, especially in seismic regions, code allows you uh, a cap at your building height, depending on that system. We'll be jumping into the ASCE 716, Chapter 12, that's the seismic design criteria chapter for building structures. We have a building, making sense. Uh, and right before we jump over there, just make sure you're understanding this thought process. Um, don't just start off by saying, uh, I need to start you know, chugging and plugging in numbers. Uh, think about where the question is trying to guide you, in which part of the code you're to, to head over to so that you can review the requirements and then apply them appropriately to your uh, problem statement work on that. That's a crucial part to your study process, not just getting the right answer to things and memorization. Makes everything a whole lot easier. Take it from me and my experiences. We find ourselves at the very beginning of chapter 12, specifically in this table, which is a very powerful table. You have over all the way to the left, you have your seismic course resisting system. That's how this table is broken out. You, you go to the system that is under um, discussion or that you're choosing to use. And then from that, you're permitted uh, different design values. So your response modification coefficient, why I'm just talking about it and not circling things, R, your overstrength factor, omega sub naught, and your deflection amplification factor, C sub D. So these things are different values, which depend upon the type of system that you choose. Makes sense. When it comes to detailing criteria, they give you the specified section you need to head to and see what additional criteria there is in order to um, successfully detail one of these systems. Everybody more often than not just thinks about this um, table to get these three things. But in reality, you have another really great and crucial part of the table. That is structural system limitations, including structural height H sub N limits. So that's gonna be us. And that's broken out, same thing, based on your seismic force resisting system of choice as well as your seismic design criteria. The higher up your seismic design criteria, the more stringent your requirements get or, or how stringent the code allows you to build your structure, how tall they allowed you to build it. Build it in this instance. Man, I'm having a tough time speaking today. Steel braced frames is a, as I just said in the name, is a frame system. You see at the beginning, you have some steel options, um, gets into concrete, gets into other materials, but uh, we're gonna find ourselves parked here right at the beginning. And then we know that we have steel uh, broken up into ordinary concentric brace frames as well as special concentric brace frames. Then you have eccentric brace frames. That is a different system, even though it sounds the same besides one, uh, one word, that's a completely different system, different requirements. So do not take that concentric versus eccentric for granted. Those are two very different things. Read the problem statement very closely. Uh, so we find ourselves with number two, steel, special, concentrically braced frames. All right, we move over. You could get R, omega, C sub D. Doesn't ask for that today though. We find ourselves in this portion. So we also know that we're in seismic design category E, bang. And so we're gonna shoot down, gonna get my big fat head out of the way. And we're gonna find ourselves honing in on solution number one. So this is a starting point. So don't just say, ah, 160. That means 160 feet is your maximum permitted height of your structure that you're allowed to build with that type of system. Do not just stop there. Don't click off, don't head somewhere else. Don't go watch a queso video or whatever it is you're going to do next. With any tables in material codes, you know, the ACI, the uh, the NDS, um, or the, the ASCE 7, anything that you use as an engineer, any of these uh, applicable specifications, any table almost always has footnotes at the end of it. So you always have to be checking out 
the footnotes to make sure you're not missing some additional steps. How do we know if we have footnotes? Well, indicators oftentimes, you'll see little subfoot letters. So like one right there, you got one right here, right there, right there, right here. Oh my gosh, you got them over here. They're everywhere. So there's a lot in this table and they're sprinkled all over the place. So you can't skip over them. Uh, the one that we want to specifically look at are in the area that we just grabbed information from. That would be this one, D, as well as E right there. Um, so let's go check on those two. Let's read about them and then we'll see if it pushes or, or changes our answer in any way of 160 feet. Well, D is just talking about uh, definitions of some variables that they have there. So NL, so you can see here, NL and MP, they're scattered in if they're, they're not represented by numbers and you're like, what the heck? That indicates no limit. So there's not a cap on the building height. It can be as tall as it wants. And NP, not permitted. So that's the complete flip opposite saying, I don't care if it's a 10 foot tall structure, you are not permitted to build any type of structure of that uh, vertical lateral system in this seismic design category area. Just it is not permitted, you can't do it. Sorry, move, choose something else. So good to know, helps us understand the table more, but it doesn't change our answer at all. We're still at 160 feet. What about footnote E? If I didn't scribble all over it, it says C section 12.2.5.4 for a description of seismic force resisting systems uh, limited to buildings with a structural height H sub N of 240 feet or less. Okay, we fall under that criteria here today because we know we were limited to 160 feet currently. So that's us. So let's go take a look at this section and see if it gives us any more criteria. That lands us here and we see increased structural height limit for steel eccentrically braced frames. I'll go different colors. Steel special concentrically braced frames. Ooh. That is us. Steel buckling restrained brace frames, BRBFs, for high seismic regions. Steel special plate shear walls. I've never designed one of those. It's pretty, pretty fancy and unique. Let me know in the comments if you ever designed one of those. It's pretty cool. And special reinforced concrete shear walls. All right. So we got the whole rainbow going on here, but we find ourselves in the green one. That is the system that we have in our problem statement. So it does, this section does apply to us. So let's take a look at what it says. The limits on structural height H sub N in table 1221, where we just were, are permitted to be increased from 160 feet, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, to 240 feet for structures assigned to seismic design categories D or E and from 100 feet to 160 feet for structures assigned to seismic design category F provided that the seismic force resisting system uh, systems are limited to steel eccentrically brace frames, steel special eccentrically brace frames, steel that it lists the same things that it just listed back there. Why? I don't know. Um, or special reinforced concrete cast in place shear walls and both of the fallen requirements are met. The structure shall not have an extreme torsional irregularity as defined in table 1231. Uh, it said, in the problem statement that our structure was regular, which means that we pass that first step. And two, because we need to do both of them, the steel eccentric brace frames, steel sprential, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, in any one plane shall resist no more than 60% of the total seismic forces in each direction, neglecting accidental torsional effects. They didn't give us this criteria here today. However, I would say that um, this is a this is a more often unique case if you do find yourself in uh, not meeting this criteria. So from our findings, we found originally 160 feet was our HN max, but because of the exception in section 12.2.5.4, we found that we can actually bump up to a max building height of 240 feet. That I'm going to say is our final answer today. So answer is C and that'll about do it.
But let me know in the comments below how it's going. If you have any trip ups or any topics specifically that you want to talk about, I'd be happy to make another video on it. And if you haven't yet and you find yourself hanging around the auditorium, consider subscribing down below. It's totally free and you can unsubscribe at any time. You all know this, it's the YouTubes. It's present day, we all know how it goes. Thank you for liking, thanks for subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.